friends, chicks. I'm here with my good friend. I've known him since what third grade? Yeah, about third grade. Uh, we've been lifelong friends. Um, talking about that uh, crash out there in Denver, Colorado. Uh, that was a hell of a mess. Uh, how long have you been driving, Kenny? As uh, long as you have, right at 30 years. So. Almost 30 years in the industry. Um, and I heard on the news this morning that that big truck was losing fluid at the side of it. Um, <laughs> they called it brake fluid. And, you know, we got 30 years experience out here on the road and never in my life have I ever had to put brake fluid in yeah, a truck. Yeah, no. that has air brakes. So, yeah. <laughs> never heard of that one. Yeah, I, I don't even, you know, I, I can't even fathom where you put the, the brake fluid. I mean, do you open the brake chamber up and pour it in there? Well, it's like that episode of MacGyver where they cut the brake lines that were attached to the trailer oh, and all this MacGyver. water come running out. That was 5-0. Was five it? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah, okay, yeah. McGarrett jumped on the back of the truck, cut the airline, and all the fluid come out. So maybe that's a brake fluid they're talking Maybe they got some different kind of trucks yeah. out west. Yeah, I don't know what they got going on out <laughs> there. <laughs> but the situation, the driver's uh, 23, 24 years old, uh, running into Denver. What, what would be your honest opinion? about a 24 year old losing his brakes going into a situation like that doing 80 uh, miles an hour first off i've been in the denver both ways and i don't see how you i, I don't know i don't know how to explain that one to you. they i know there's just not no major grade going into Denver. they said there was a no. runaway ramp but i've never seen that i've been to denver i've been out, there, been out there a bunch and i've never seen it if it's there i've went right back yeah so, and I've been in some junk ass trucks, you know that. Yeah, I've been out through there when some was that Jake breaks. Yeah. You know. Never had a problem. So, it just. The problem with the younger generation is they only know one thing, and that's as fast as it'll go, that's how they want to drive it. Right. Well, I think it's the lack of training for the most part, because these big companies, uh, Swift, Snyder, Warner, Western Express, don't get me started on them pieces of shit. Uh, go to the driving school right down the street here for three weeks, then one of them companies will pick you up, put you in a truck. You're a professional truck driver because you've been trained. Right out of school. Right out of school. Well, here's the problem with that. I've been out here for almost 30 years, and I'm still learning every friggin' day. Learn something every day new. Something new every day. So I think it was just a pure lack of training on that driver's behalf that caused the accident, caused them people to die. I just don't see how... You know, these big companies get them right out of school and put them in a, I say, you know, $160,000, $170,000 piece of equipment and put them on their way by themselves, you know. Yeah, what, what do you, and you know, they get in wrecks, what do you think's going to happen? Yeah, they're going to hurt somebody. Yeah. They're going to kill somebody. So you, sure. you figure this trailer right here and a truck hooked to it, full of cargo, you're right at 80,000 pounds. A lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. People just don't realize how much weight, which... I can understand this because when I was leaving Western Express, there was a driver sitting out there. I said, you know, this industry needs to go back to standard transmissions. Uh, he had a fit. Oh, well, you just want to go back to the dark ages where the black <laughs> smoke's rolling out the stacks and you got to have the standard transmissions and paper logs. Yeah, no, I want to exactly. get back to being a real truck That's driver. Trucking. Real truck drivers. Yeah, There's you want no it to go back to the... Driving no, more. no, you mash They're, the button and mash the pedal. They took the skill mm -hmm. out of it, no paper logs, ain't got to do no paperwork hardly no more, just mash drive and mash the gas and go. Yeah. No skill in it. I yeah, push a couple buttons and logs. steer the wheel. I'm lazy as <laughs> all. <laughs> but my truck that I drive, but my personal truck that I drive, has a 16-speed transmission. I love that something. You split the four on the bottom, Flip the button, split the four on the top, eight and eight sixteen. Yeah, these new guys though, they want that automatic. Yeah. Well, these new guys, new guys would look at that sixteen and say, "What the hell's them three buttons for?" And these big companies, man, they, they promise you the world and promise you, they, they promise you anything to get you out there. Yeah. And once they get you out there, it's a completely different ball game. Completely different ball game. So, but the discussion today is about brake fluid in these big trucks. Yeah. I just never heard of that. I, I cannot fathom where are we going to put the brake fluid in these fucking trucks to make them stop. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out myself. Now, I've worked on the brakes. I've put brakes on trucks. Um, it's always been air, yeah. springs, but they do have disc brakes now. But even with these disc brakes, they're air operated. 
and I have heard of hydraulic brakes, but not on a, a you know, just like a, maybe like a single axle dump truck or something like that, like a moving van, but I've never heard of brake fluid on a semi truck. Right. Yeah. Well, like my panel van out there, it's got hydraulic, hydraulic brakes. But, you know, that's a small vehicle. It's yeah, what, what maybe to haul, what you got there, probably, what, 8,000 pounds yeah. max? Yeah. You know? It was a, you picked up a dirty uniform, what it was. I've even heard of brakes being operated by propane. I've uh, never heard of that. One. Them ice cream trucks. What's the name of that ice cream company that goes to door to door? Swan. 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 Yeah, Swan. Oh, they, you said ice cream company, and that threw me. If you'd said, you know, food delivery and stuff like that, uh, I'd have said Swans. Yeah, them Swan trucks actually have propane brakes on them. Yeah. They're operated off propane. I've never heard of. Brake fluid in a semi. But as far as brake fluid, that's got me. Yeah, brother, that's got me. I'm telling you. But these new drivers, I mean, the kid's 23, 24 years old. He's fixed to spend the rest of his life in prison purely because he was not trained properly to handle the equipment that he was assigned to. And hey, I, man, I, don't, I don't fault nobody for, you know, not saying nothing bad about anybody going to school. Everybody's got to learn. Right. You got to start and somewhere. I don't fault nobody for that, but. A lot of these schools, like this one right here up the road, they train you with an empty trailer, yeah. and most of them's 48. Nobody pulls 48 no more. No. Well, okay. that's what this one is. Yeah, well, you know, like I do, a lot of people don't pull 48. Right. It's all 53s. They're not loaded. There's no grades around here. No. Uh-uh. All right. They don't teach you. They, they can explain to you and tell you all day how to drive in snow and ice. But until you get out there and actually do it, then that's the accident waiting to happen. And here's the theory on that. They give you chains for your tires. Now, I've been out here as long as you. How many times have you put a chain Never. on tires? tire? I won't. I won't. I've got chains. I will not put them on my tires because if the weather's so bad, you got to put a chain on that tire, guess what time it is? Time to stop. Yep, to time sleep. to park. Find a bar, get a beer. Because your beer life is more important hours. than that freight. I will never change. I've never, in 30 years, I've never changed never. a tire. I won't, I, neither. I've went to Washington, Seattle, Portland. I've been all up in there. I will not chain a tire if they tell me i got to have chains. Yeah, even when there was uh, an avalanche right there in Idaho and they closed the road down, so we had to stop park at a rest area overnight till they cleared the road That's where we right could get there. through in the morning. Yep, we parked right there. The snow was taller than him. You know, everybody's got to learn. I don't fault nobody for learning, but the trucking industry has went completely 100% down yeah. in the last 20 years. Back when me and you first started doing it, you could go and you could make good money and you could have fun doing it. You can't even get nobody to talk to you on CB or stop and help you no more. No. If you don't have, everybody's constantly on the phone. CBs are just about obsolete. A thing of the past, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You find a couple of old drivers out there, the old school guys, that they'll talk to you, but this newer generation, they just, you know, and I don't fault nobody for learning, but. And there's good living there. But nowadays, everybody wants you to go and they want you to stay gone. Three, yeah. four weeks at a time, you know. It's, it's a camaraderie. It's just not in the industry like it used yeah. to be. I mean, because, you know, we've, we've been out here. We've helped each other uh, work on trucks and do shit. And we've been out on the road to help each other. And yeah, we were raised, sort of raised into it. Right. You know, my dad drove for years. Your dad drove for years. And we got family that's drove. So we've been around it all our life. So both of us second-generation right. drivers. And, uh, it just it, it baffles me the stupidity that's happening with the industry. Oh, it just went 100% upside down, man. So I'm just I'm thankful. A couple more years, I'm done with it, and we're over. So, but you got any more on that brake fluid situation? No, other than uh, if he can figure out where it went, I'd like to really know. I would like. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, that's a new one to me. I'd like to know. It looked like a Freightliner truck. Maybe he was driving. Something like that. Unless it was, you know, made in Mexico or, or somewhere like that. No, because the Kenworth I'm driving now is made in Mexico. And it, ain't it ain't got brake fluid? Yeah. No. Did you tell him about that guy at the truck stop? Uh, the young kid at the truck stop? Yeah, I encountered this young boy the other day up there in South Carolina, waiting to take a shower. He was so proud. He has this brand new 2019 Peterbilt. He called it a three, uh, what's that? Uh, 379. 379. 379. Well, you know, they don't make 379 no more. They make a version of the 379, right. but 
but they call it something else, like 378. 378 or something. Some, like something that. like that. Well, he was calling, he had about 379 Peterbilt. He had the big red Cummins in it. He had a 13 speed transmission. He could run his truck 80 mile an hour and get 8 miles per gallon. That's a super truck. That's 80 mile an hour. Yeah, I've never, never heard of that. 8 miles to the gallon. Yeah, I've, I've been around this for, there's people spend, you know, like you said, millions and millions of dollars to try to figure out how to get it there, and nobody's done it yet. Right. How can this guy figure it out? Well, he was a certified cat mechanic oh, 10 oh, years ago. Okay, that explains it all. Yeah. Ten, uh -huh. ten years ago, he was a certified oh, captain. That's good. So, but he's driving a Cummins. Well, I'm glad he's got it figured out. So, yeah. Well, 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 first off, what is he even doing in that truck? If he's got that figured out, how to do that, then he just shouldn't be driving. He should be sitting back telling all these big companies like Detroit, Cummins, Caterpillar, and Mac how to do it, mm -hmm. and he could just get the money off of it because he'd right. be a millionaire. But he was so proud of his three thousand oh, dollar paycheck. Oh, I imagine so. And that little three thousand dollar paycheck, he yeah. was just proud of. But I just, look at the truck payment he probably got. Oh no, he said it was paid for. Oh, yeah, right. So, it, it was paid yeah. for. I guarantee you, most of that paycheck went to paying that truck. Oh, I'm guaranteeing. Oh, absolutely. You, you running for free? It, you know that big classic Peterbilt truck with that big motor. Looks good. Oh yeah. Looks, oh yeah, it looks good. Looks but, good. but here's the situation. You're lucky if you get five miles to the gallon. Physics and aerodynamics tells you that particular truck. He'll be lucky to get five and a half. If he runs slow, he'll get six he to might six get and a half. Six, six and a half. Maybe. If he runs slow. Right. But if he's running that truck like he says he's going to run, he's getting about four. Right. Three four. and a half, four miles a gallon. That's the, all you're going to get. That's it. At 80 mile an hour. There's no way. He, he was, uh, that's one of them full of BS drivers. Full of BS drivers. <laughs> this will explain it all. My truck is a 2019 Kenworth. T680. Got the big red motor in it, the big red Cummins motor. A regular load on that flatbed, I can get seven miles to the gallon at 68 mile an hour. <clears throat> I picked up a load out of Savannah. It was one of the motors for the windmill. That weighed 60,000 pounds. Big, oversized, up over the top of the truck. And I'm telling you about aerodynamics, I'm telling you about physics. At 63 mile an hour, I got 5.2 miles per gallon. Yeah, that's all you're going to get. Because of the wind resistance of that big bulky machine on the back. Now my truck looks like a bullet running down the road. It's all aerodynamic squished down. I mean, it's just aerodynamic. It's a beautiful truck. Regular loads, I'm up there at seven, seven and a half. I get that wind resistance with that big square pulling back. I ain't getting shit. Yeah, you're bucking a headwind. You're bucking a you headwind, know? exactly. And you're not going to get it. So you take that square truck that's all square, it's not aerodynamic, I don't give a shit what you do to that motor, what you do to the gears, what you do to that transmission, you ain't getting it. You're not going to get it. Anyways, that's my bitch for today, people. Y'all rooster up, have fun, live life.